What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the markets, taking a look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ, and we're also going to be talking about any trades that I made today, if any, on the 19th in August of 2019. So if you enjoy this video guys, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, and also we're going to be talking about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching as well, so stay tuned for that portion in the video so without further ado guys let's get right into it and just like the futures indicated in yesterday's video that I was talking about remember the futures were up about 0.4 percent in the S&P well the S&P gapped up this morning it ended up going up $34.97 up 1.21 percent and if we go on the one day very quickly the one day one minute you guys can see we gapped up we were kind of trading Trading right here in the futures market, right? We were up about 0.5%. And then we gapped up and kind of stalled really at that level of resistance right around 2930, um, you know, for the remainder of the day. If we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average very quickly, you guys can see something very similar. We gapped up, ended up going up about 250 points, up about 0.96%, and we stalled at about 26200 ish That was that level of resistance today on the Dow Jones. Going over here to the NASDAQ, guys, this is obviously the future. If I quickly go on my Yahoo Finance very quickly, give me one second here, guys. I can see here that the NASDAQ was up 106 points today, up 1.35%, doing better than both the S&P and the Dow Jones. And you can clearly see here, guys, you know, ever since about 4 uh, p.m. on this NASDAQ, we've actually been going down a bit, and the futures are indicating here that we are uh, down about $6 as of right now. So that's kind of the gist on the overall market um, right now. And now to go back to the S&P, let's talk about some critical points that I'm seeing right now, and I talked about these very briefly today in the chat. I'm actually seeing a triple top right now at the S &P, on the S&P 500 here on the 184 hour chart and if you guys zoom in a bit you can see exactly what I'm talking about right there's a clear resistance here uh, at about what is this 29.25 to about 29.20 ish right that general level we can see we've hit two uh, a green candlestick pretty much and then a red rejection candlestick we got rejected forming a red candlestick at that level once same thing happened here we got a green candlestick Strong re uh, rejection resistance at this point, red candlestick, and then a huge gap down. And now we're at that same point, right? We're at that point. <clears throat> and if we go a bit closer here, you can clearly see again, like I showed you, that level of resistance is very strong. We had five different points today in time one, two, three, four, five, where we tried to break out. And if we did, right, that would have been a bullish move, but we got rejected. It's very, very clear. So this honestly leads me to why I didn't actually take a position today in any stocks or in any of these market and uh, ETFs that I trade on the channel. The real, you know, uh, a reason behind this is I'm waiting to see now tomorrow indicated by the futures, maybe pre-market. I want to see, are we going to potentially see a bearish move at this point where the S&P is? Are we going to gap down, right? Are we going to gap down and potentially potentially open up entry points in, you know, some of these volatility ETFs like uh, TVIX, UVXY, maybe in some of these, you know, S&P 500 ETFs like SPXS, uh, which goes up three times what the S&P is going down, right? Meaning if the S&P is down 2%, you know, SPXS could be a 6% mover over the next day or two if we do get that, let's say, 2% gap down here on the S&P 500. So honestly, this was a move of patience for me, right? I didn't try to force a trade today because I really want to see what the S&P does here. And on the flip side, you know, if we get that breakout, which would be obviously a break out of this, that would be pretty much a horizontal pattern break. And you can see here, if I just do this very quickly, you guys can probably already see it from these levels. But if I illustrate it a bit closer for you guys, 
You know, now that I'm looking at it, it was also a resistance back in the beginning of August. But anyway, now that I uh, do that, you can see if we break out of the horizontal pattern here, that's going to be bullish. Same same uh, uh, reason if we broke below, that would be bearish. So it really just depends where we're breaking at this point and if we get rejected or not at this point for the S&P. And once that does happen, if that does happen, you know, I'm going to be playing one of these short ETFs to make more uh, a more uh, profit at that point in time because of not risking as much, um, you know, by today taking a premature position, just the way I view it, right? So that is kind of what I'm looking at here on the S&P 500 and kind of my philosophy on the markets right now. I want to see which direction they take. And, you know, if we go back to the NASDAQ very quickly, you can also see we are at a point of resistance right now at about 77.50. It's clearly getting rejected there. Now the futures continue to fall down almost down about 0.1%. So I want to see, right? This is just me being patient, me being very, very kind of, you know, risk adverse at this point. I want to see where we're going to head. Are we going to break down, which would give me more confidence to play one of these, you know, again, short ETFs in this case on the NASDAQ, the SQQQ ETF, right? So if we go to the Dow very quickly, you guys can see very similar scenario. We're at a point where we're at a resistance now at about 26,200, 26,300, or we got rejected two separate times in the past. So I want to see, are we going to take the downwards direction here, get rejected, or are we going to pop? So today, me not trading was really a patience move. I want to see where the opportunity is going to present itself tomorrow, and I'm going to attack at that. And of course, I'll let you guys know, um, you know in tomorrow's video. So that's kind of the breakdown right now. And also, guys, I feel like the market's going up right now and to continue to fly up and maybe to all-time highs it just doesn't make sense to me there's a lot of negative things right now you know there's the, the the inverted yield curve obviously the trade war we have these tariffs coming into effect in December you know I personally think at this point in time you know there is a bit more downside to these markets than there are upside but again that's my personal opinion just because I'm saying that don't take that as your opinion you have to really you know, create your own opinion on the matter and go on your judgments. Just don't do it because I'm saying it or don't believe it because I'm saying it. I'm just on this YouTube channel documenting my journey and uh, really just talking about my personal opinions, right? So don't take it as yours. That's kind of what I'm trying to say here. So that is just the philosophy, right? I just think there's a bit more downside. And honestly, if we talk about some of the stocks and ETFs that I'm going to be watching, I have a list here. You can see some plays are opening up here if the market does end up dumping. LABD is one that I'm really liking. Let me pull this one up for you guys. And LABD, I'm sure a lot of you already know, it's a biotechnology um, ETF. And it trades based upon SPSIBI. A bunch of people ask me, what does LABD trade on? This is the, or trade based upon, this is the index that it tracks right here. Here, the S&P Biotechnology Select Industry Index. And notice how this is opening up an LABD play. LABD goes up whenever SPS IBI is selling off, right? So at this point, if we get rejected by this 180 SMA, which has been a, re a resistance point clearly on this hourly chart multiple times in the past, you know, if we get rejected and do something like this and especially break below that 50 simple moving average here, that is going to be, in my opinion, a very, very clear indication that we should be trading, I should be trading rather, LABD, right? LABD, you can see from 2275, roughly where it topped out at a couple days ago, that was about a 13% um, profit of margin open, right? Profit margin open. And as the market over the past two days, obviously the market has been going up. That's pulled up the uh, industry, uh, uh, the biotechnology index, and obviously that's pulled down LABD. BD. So guys, if the theory of the market kind of being irrationally pumped up right now, and maybe we see a sell off the rest of this week, tomorrow, maybe in the end of the week, you know, if that ends up happening, this could really end up dumping the biotechnology index and popping up LABD. I'm really thinking that's possible right now. I'm just keeping an eye on it. You can keep an eye on it too. If you've done your own due diligence and understand why you're trading it, you have to do that. Don't trade anything based off of my opinion. Another 
another one that I'm really liking right now is Drip. So Drip, D-R-I-P. This is another inverse ETF, and it trades based upon XOP. Let me pull up XOP for you guys so we can see exactly what I'm personally thinking right now. So XOP, you can see it up here. I'm pointing to the screen like you guys can see, but you can see it on my mouse, right? SPDR, um, Series Trust, S&P Oil, Gas uh, uh, ETF, right? You can clearly see that. And over the past couple of weeks, you know, this has been on a very obvious downtrend, trending below that 180 SMA. If we drag it out a bit here, you guys can see it's honestly been downtrending for this entire year, right? XOP has been getting crushed. And if we go to drip now, you can see drip goes up right whenever xop is going down so drip has been doing very very well actually from 37 dollars all the way up to about 120 over the course of the past couple of months and now you're realizing how we're on a bit of a pullback right this has been a very bullish etf right like we saw xop has been getting crushed and every pullback you have to think okay could this be an entry point for this etf or stock whatever you're looking at and in my opinion right since we've been extremely bullish and if we get this one confirmation on uh, X, uh, XOP which I'll show you if we get that and we pop on this 50 SMA there's upwards of 20 to 25 percent margin on drip and let me show you guys that confirmation that I'm looking for very quickly on XOP here you guys can probably see it's been getting rejected under that 50 SMA on this four hour chart right here if we get neck uh, neck uh, knocked down what am I saying guys knacked what the heck if we get knocked down at this 50 SMA, we may be selling off a bit further from there. That's kind of what I'm waiting for before taking a position in drip. And let's say we're gapping up on drip tomorrow. That's going to be a pretty good sign that XOP and we're gapping down on XOP. That XOP is getting hit under that 50 SMA. And if we go to the 20 day, one hour, if we get rejected by this 180 SMA, do something like that. We start to dump that will open up a position on drip in my personal opinion and on the flip side let's say we do something like this we break out that's going to be a clear breakout we could potentially be running on the inverse to drip which is gush you know, we'll, we might see a move on that one, right? Which is awesome with these inverse ETFs. If you're very diligent in your technical analysis, you watch the charts very closely in real time, you know, you can see a bunch of potential plays and really you can see which way it breaks out and then plan your trade from there. So those are honestly the top two. Let me take a look that I talk about too yet. Yeah, those are the top two that I'm watching heading into tomorrow, guys. Natural gas is also making a bullish move if we go and take a look at it you guys can see on the 184 hour chart if i zoom in a bit we've broken above the 50 sma holding it as a new support we retested it here um i think this was today yes it was today at 9 a.m we held it for a higher low and now we're starting to see some rejection under that 180 sma so i want to see at this point if we break out here which i think is possible we can get a trade on you gas which goes up whenever natural gas is going up and on the flip side guys the perfect thing again about these inverse ETFs let's say we get rejected by that 180 SMA we don't get the breakout and especially we break under that 50 SMA we could be trading the inverse to you guys which is DGAS and DGAS goes up whenever natural gas is going down so those are the three main inverse ETF pairs that I'm watching uh, you know, heading into tomorrow, of course, I'm watching TVIX. I talk about this one all the time. It's been getting killed because the markets have been doing well and the VIX has been dropping. But remember, guys, if the trade war starts to kick in again, which I'm sure it will, if it starts to get rowdy on social media, on Twitter, and on, on the main news channels, whatever it may be, this is going to hit the markets. It literally does every single time. And TVIX, mark my words, I know a bunch of my viewers know this, it's gone up 40%. In one day mark my words it's going to open up a very good play if you catch it remember it moves quick if you catch it if you're diligent enough you know you can get that move on tvix which is what i'm honestly waiting for for tomorrow maybe the next day or maybe the end of the week we'll see if it ends up coming so that's the main one i'm watching in uh the volatility side here spxs which again we talked about it it goes up whenever the s p is going down sqqq goes 
up whenever the NASDAQ is going down. I'm watching that one as well. So some of the stocks I talked about yesterday, you know, AMD ended up doing decent today earlier on in the day, got rejected by that 180 SMA, and it's now kind of hovering between the two moving averages. So I want to see which direction this one picks. That will be a telltale of what it's going to do, in my personal opinion, in terms of short-term analysis here on AMD. What else did we talk about in yesterday's video? I'm, start, I'm trying to remember now. AM. Uh, GRN, I, I don't know, that's probably not the ticker, no, but you guys probably know if you watched yesterday's video, but yeah, guys, pretty much, oh, Facebook's another one we talked about, this one did pretty well today, but still, it's showing, it's just, at, at this point, I feel like it's, it's like in a wedge, right, we need to see what it does here, this is a point where we can either get a bullish or a bearish move, so that's kind of just, you know, a bunch of the stocks, I'm just, kind of waiting on them, right, in the ETFs as well, and I didn't want to pull the trigger today because we saw that re uh, resistance on the S&P all day, so I just wanted to play it safe, right, and a bunch of the stocks here, they're not screaming opportunity in my personal opinion, or at least the ones I analyze, right, I'm sure there's ones that you guys have analyzed, you're like, what are you talking about stocks, I see opportunity here, but guys, I can't analyze all the stocks in the market every day, no one really can do that, and uh, that's just the truth, right, so that that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, if you found any value in the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general, and I do appreciate every single one of you guys that are doing that, right? And if you want to see further content, consider subscribing and hit that comment down below. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys are doing in the markets. What are you watching? Stocks, ETFs, I would love to know. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate every single one of you guys watching. It means the world to me. Peace out.